We are back, guys. We're back with another one. Another pitch meeting reaction here. Stranger Things Season 4 pitch meeting. Wonder what's going to happen Let's with check this out. I really <laughs> enjoyed that last season. Let's go. Crazy. So, you have a new season of Stranger Things for me? Yes, sir, I do. And guess what? No. Freaking Hopper is alive. Oh, man. It must have been tough for him to survive that big machine explosion that vaporized everyone in the room last season. Oh, Actually, real. it was super easy. Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, yeah, he check this out. He got out of the way. What? Yeah, it turns out that was an option that was on the table just jumping out of the way. So, he's alive. He didn't die. Wow, well, well, okay. That was easy. Yeah, but see, then it turns out he was picked up by some Russians who somehow got there before the Americans arrived and they put him in this crazy Russian prison. Oh, those are in Russia. And so Joyce and Murray are gonna have to head over there and help him escape. Very exciting. And then he gets caught and goes back to jail and they're gonna have to help him escape. Oh, but then later they're gonna escape and they realize they gotta go back. So they're just kind of going in and out of prison this season. In and out for hours, sir. <laughs> Plus Hopper has like a broken ankle and probably frostbitten feet. Man, that's yeah. probably gonna complicate things. Nope. Oh, okay. And we're gonna have this nice reunion with him and Joyce and they're actually gonna yeah. kiss. Oh, yeah, it's really nice and he lets her know that he's been eating maggot filled bread for months oh my god yeah, so you can imagine how that kiss tasted okay enough about the russia stuff what's going on with the upside down what's the big threat this season oh we got this new bad guy this season oh boy so what's his deal he's this super scary guy he's bald and slimy looking he's got like dark magical powers right and many years ago when the hero was young they somehow defeated this powerful villain and he's been plotting his return ever since uh-huh and so beyond all odds it's gonna be a group of high school students that have to take on this bald, super powerful magic guy. Yeah, I mean, I'm familiar. Wants to take over the world with his dark powers, thinks non-magical people are beneath him, name starts with the V. Yeah? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, everybody's familiar with Voldemort. No, Voldemort. it's not Voldemort. I'm not talking about Voldemort. What do you mean it's not Voldemort? You just described Voldemort. No, he's not like Voldemort at all. Does he have a nose? So what's Voldemort up to? What does he want? He's not, okay, so Voldemort is terrorizing Hawkins and he's doing this thing where he's snapping kids' legs and blowing their eyes oh, yeah. up. Oh, oh my that. god. Yeah, and this cool new character, Eddie's gonna get blamed for these murders, so the team's gonna try to help him not get killed by the townspeople. Very nice of them. And so Voldemort needs to open up these four gates from the upside down, and one of the people he's targeting is Max. Oh no. But right before he kills her, they figure out that if she's listening to her favorite song, he can't kill her. And also, they find out the house that he's living in. How do they figure that out? Well, after he attacks Max, she's like doodling these little pieces of what she saw, and then Nancy is assembles them all together and is like, whoa, this is a house. She was just doodling disconnected pieces of a house that then intricately assembled to form said house. That's what we're going with. Well, okay then, and what else is going on? Well, Jonathan has a new friend named Argyle. And what's he bringing to the table? A van and salt access. Oh, sick, and what's going on with Eleven? Well, she's been living in California with Will and Jonathan and her powers are gone. Oh yeah, that's right. So she's gonna reluctantly work with Dr. Brenner to get her powers back and go save her friends. Didn't he die in the first season? Wasn't he killed by a Demogorgon? It sure seemed that way because of what happened, but no, he survived. How? By not explicitly dying on screen. Oh yeah, that does tend to be a great survival tactic. It does. So he's using this machine to bring Eleven back into her forgotten memories of that whole experiment thing when she was a kiddo. Okay. So she's remembering all these conversations she had with this Henry guy that worked there. Conversations? Couldn't she not talk back then? Hey, shut up. And so eventually she accidentally sets this guy loose, not realizing that he was actually number one and he he hates Dr. Brenner and he's evil. Uh -oh. Yeah, so he goes nuts and kills all the other kids and injures Dr. Brenner. Why doesn't he kill Brenner too if he hates him so much? Unclear, but so then Eleven goes <laughs> super intense and sends him into the Upside Down where he turns into Vecna. Who? Ugh, Voldemort. He's from Harry Potter. Right, and so eventually we're gonna get to the finale and all the good guys have to do this crazy stuff simultaneously to defeat the bad guy. What do they have to do? Well, a bunch of them head into the Upside Down. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. And so Dustin and Eddie need to a bunch of these bat things away from the Voldemort house so Steve and Nancy and Robin could go kill him while they're using Max as bait. And how do they distract the bats? Oh, well, Eddie does this crazy Metallica performance on top of a trailer, and then when the bats come flying in, he has to rush down and get inside the trailer, and let me tell you, he cuts it pretty close. Why didn't he do that performance right in front of the door? Because being on the roof looks a lot cooler. That's a good point. And later, Eddie's gonna die. That makes sense. Oh, you're not surprised? I mean, he's a seemingly lovable character.
character introduced in a new season of Stranger Things, that's pretty much a death sentence. That's a good point, but he does <laughs> die like a hero by distracting some bats that didn't really need to be distracted anymore. Well, great. And meanwhile, in Voldemort's house, the other characters are going to get choked out by some vines. Oh, no. For 45 minutes. That's how do they not die? Unclear. And so then at the same time, Eleven is using her powers to go inside Max's mind to try to defeat Voldemort. Oh, how does that go? Well, they show their hands to each other for quite some time. Amazing. And at a certain point, Amazing. it seems like Eleven's going to lose, but then Mike tells her that he loves her and she needs to fight. So that gives her an extra boost. She just spent the whole season trying to get her powers back so she could fight. Did she really need a reminder? I just needed something for Mike to do. Oh, okay, gotcha. And at the same time in Russia, Hopper and Joyce and Murray realize they need to join the fight as well. What? How? Oh, well, they vaguely find out that the kids are fighting some kind of evil back home. So they're like, hey, there were some monsters at the prison. So maybe if we go fight them, that'll help in some way. Because it's like a hive mind. Oh, a very big leap. A huge leap, sir. But not only does it turn out they're right, they do it at precisely the perfect moment. Wow, crazy how stuff like that works out sometimes, huh? I know, right? Especially when I've written it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so they manage to defeat Voldemort, but then Max dies, which opens up this massive gate all around Hawkins. Oh, no. But then Eleven brings Max back from the dead, which is a thing she can do now. Oh, great. Yeah, great. and so then two days later... Wait, two days? What happened? How'd they get out of the Upside Down? Don't worry about it. So they're back, and the gates are closed, and Max is in a coma, and the gates reopen, and we're done. Wait, what? We're done. Check back in in, like, three years, please. Oh, okay. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a great season. Hey, what do you think we should use for Max's favorite song? Well, I was thinking we bring Kate Bush back into the mainstream with that song, Running Up That Hill. Ah, Running we're going to give that hill. old song a huge boost. Uh -huh. Oh, bringing back the bush is tight. Don't phrase it like that. Sorry, yeah, no. But we totally will, though. <laughs> <laughs> he said bringing back the bush is tight. <laughs> yeah, this one cracked me up. This is hilarious. This yeah. guy this guy's always so funny, man. He's so good, He's like so good. appointing every so... part. It's like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. How that just happened. Like... <laughs> These fish meetings are so and then, damn good. And then the way that they end of the season was like so unfinished. I know, like so a unfinished. huge cliffhanger. Yeah. Like half the yeah. town is destroyed, fire everywhere. And so then, you know there's going to be another season. You yeah. Know, you know. But yeah. I heard it's going to be the last one. I don't know if I believe it. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I believe that. that at all. This show makes so much money. It's so, like, yeah, huge. Yeah, they even, it's, hu it's a huge show. It's probably the hugest show Netflix has ever had. Yeah. And they even have like the uh, the experience that you could go yeah, and it's like, in Brooklyn, I think it is. They have it all over the, the place. I, I think know. they go in different towns, different mm. cities. Uh, but a lot of people went to see it. I heard we know people that went to see it. They had a good time. We should have went. We should have went. We should have went. But anyway, I love this season. I really did. I enjoyed it, even though it has its silliness. It's like uh, things that don't make sense. But the characters, I just love the feel of the show. This one was darker than all the Way other ones. Darker. This one Way really felt darker. like a scary movie. What I love about the show is that each season kind of picks a, a, almost like a genre of the 80s, like a movie of the 80s. And this one was kind of like an homage to Freddy Cooper. Mm -hmm. So the Freddy Cooper Nightmare on Elm Street movies where you have this Freddy Cooper character kind of invading your dreams, giving you nightmares. And that's what like Beckner was. So I enjoyed it. The darkest one, the the season before uh, this one, the third one, I really didn't like it too much, and mm -hmm. I felt like the show was starting to go downhill yeah. after the third one. Mm -hmm. But this one stepped it up and it blew off. Yeah, Stranger yeah. Things is back. I mean, everything plus with the music, with oh, like yeah. I love how that song. dark it was, you know, mm -hmm. like Beckman really did it. Like he yeah. really played that evil character. You know, the way that he killed the the people, right? Mm -hmm. It was like, oh my god. That's when I was like, wait, this is way too dark for kids. It was rough. The way he was killing people in the beginning of the season, I was like, whoa. It's like an exorcism right there. Yeah. Like. <laughs> and you know what? I didn't realize it, but this show really needed a main bad guy. Mm -hmm. Because in the previous seasons, it was just like monsters, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. there was like no main baddie. But now that they gave the show like a main bad guy, then it kind of like took it up to another level. And that connected everything, right? Exactly. Because he was connected to everything. Exactly. So. The whole time. The whole time. I enjoyed it. I thought this was hilarious. What'd you think? Yeah. Hilarious. I mean, he always makes me like laugh so hard. Yeah. Like it's crazy. <laughs> he does an amazing yeah. job. But this is one of my favorites. <laughs> this was hilarious. 
Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Subscribe to the channel. If there's any like. other pitch meetings that you like us to react to, let us know in the comments. Peace out.